Mr. New, I start huh? 3 o'clock already. The other person haven't come. Mm. Oh, wait, 5 minutes. Up to me lah. Huh? Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, how, how, how. Uh, so it's just you and me. <laughs> <laughs> the, other, the other colleague haven't come, and then John, who said he's gonna come, but he couldn't come. So, uh, and then I emailed almost everybody in my division. Uh, but nobody come, so it's just you and me. <laughs> okay, then one more. <laughs> okay, so uh, I earlier in the morning I was presenting this lah. So I, I thought just play as a as a clip, yeah. Because we had to hi. How do I call you? Sham. Sham. Okay, that's good. That's good. Yeah, easy for me to remember. Uh, Lawrence, and he is uh, Wen Yong. Uh, Wen Yong. Crescent, and you are from? Masling. Muscling, okay. It's, it's okay, it's okay. He can, you can all sit here uh, if, if you don't mind. Yeah. Right yeah. Yeah. So I'm just charging my handphone and, and stuff. Lah. Yeah. Okay, can. So originally, uh, we are actually an A-level project uh, under EduLab funding. So are you firm, do you want to find out about EduLab? It's a, it's a way to get money from MOE and uh, National Research Foundation so that you can fund good teacher ideas. So if you have a good idea like what we had, we, we, we were using open source physics simulations to allow the students to be like scientists uh, what do I mean? That means the student can first of all collect data, uh, analyze the data, then from there uh, come up with a physics explanation uh, of, or, or models, uh, you would like to call it models, about the phenomena. So uh, these, are, these are the various members in my, in my team. Okay? So because I'm in ETD, uh, Ed Tech Division, Ed Tech, yeah, Ed Tech Division, so uh, then I, I spam some of my colleagues. Lah. Uh, who teach physics. So then there's this guy called Darren. So he asked me, why not I conduct a, a sharing? La? Because I told him that he could use these simulations for his undergrad, as his PGDE as well as his undergrad courses. So he told me that um, uh, while the, the simulation could be well designed and then there's worksheet, everything is free, opening, everything is open source, you can download and use. Uh, but maybe teachers need an uh, opportunity to find out about the design features. So that was the catalyst for why I decided to have workshop. So I think why today uh, there's only two of you. Uh, I think you probably have a greater understanding than I. It's a busy period. La. <laughs> okay. So uh, what I'm trying to say is it's by no means a measure of the quality of the things I was going to share. Uh, even though there's only three of us. <laughs> John wanted to come, but he do, couldn't come. So I, I got to know John because John attended another previous workshop. Then he said that he was able to change the sims. So I said, hey, why don't you come? But then he said he's, because he's a, he's a trainee teacher, he hasn't gone to NIE yet. So uh, now he's in NIE, so he said he got some lessons, so he can't come. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so that's the, the context. Uh, okay, everything will be on my blog. Okay, so um, if you are not familiar with uh, my name, you just type uh, Singapore Physics Teacher. Okay, just Google it. Uh, so minus all the ads. So the first one is is my blog. Okay, after you come to my blog, it will look something like this. Okay, it's not showing up correctly. Because it's the missing uh, okay menu. The menu now is back up. Okay, so today is the is the is the first post lah. So so this is a, a proper Tracy workshop. You probably sign up. So you can see that, that these are your, your names. Uh, I was given the cert even before I conducted the workshop. <laughs> okay. So uh, so everything is here lah. Okay. So like I was talking to uh, Wen Yong right. Yeah. Okay, Wen Yao. 
So he wanted to find out about the 5E model, okay? So, and, and I found out that he's from Crescent and you are from Marsling. Yeah. So you are teaching in the secondary school. So some of the things that I'm sharing may not be directly applicable to your, your level. So do let, do sound me out if this is uh, getting nowhere for you and you would like to talk about more of the uh, O-level sims because I have actually a lot of O-level sims as well. Uh, it's just that because my colleagues who formalize the the project team, we are all for teaching in the JC, so it doesn't make sense for us to, to dwell on curriculum that we don't use. So since you are in the secondary school, then it will make perfect sense for me to talk about secondary school content, okay? So maybe I just try uh, to get a sense. Huh? So today, uh, essentially, the, the objective was to share about the nine computer models. Okay, we made nine simulations, customized from the open source physics library, okay? So we use the guided inquiry approach. Okay. Uh, we usually use worksheets. Uh, some lessons we use Google Sites. Uh, but we find that Google Site could be slightly more interactive. You know, everything is there online, every student can go back. But the worksheet seems to have certain appeal. I'm not sure why in the A level we, we like worksheets. La. Maybe the, the JCs are not ready for e-learning as, as much. So do you do you face problems things like this in the O level system? In my school, so they give worksheets. Worksheets, lah. Yeah. Do you build Google Docs? Google Docs, ah. For us, teachers who are so want to learn. Oh. So we want to have a PC. Okay. So we have a spread, lah. So uh, paper as well as a uh, e form. Uh, I I personally like the the Google site because once you build it everything is there and then if you have a couple of them then it can actually form your entire curriculum for the year and then students can do revision and go back to the same go back to the google site or, or blog okay so uh most of us subscribe to the idea of using 5e okay engage uh, i can't remember the those in the middle lah, but if you if i get it wrong let me know uh, engage explore uh, elaborate explain uh, and communicate is it? Sorry, extend. Uh. Extend will be the the six and the seven. Uh. I think it's evaluate. Uh. Evaluate, yeah. Because if you look look at the literature for five E model, I will do my homework uh, So that's why I can talk like that. <laughs> okay, engage, explore, explain, elaborate, and evaluate. Okay, or oh, it has gone uh, bigger. I think. Okay. So the extending part uh, is because towards the end, uh, that, that will go into the 7E. And it's actually an extension to the 5E. So 7E actually talks about the beginning and the end. The beginning is called illicit. That means that's the part where we talk about getting students prior knowledge. So we try to uh, understand from their perspective what will be meaningful in the lesson of physics that they can relate in their life. Uh, eliciting on their prior knowledge then the, at the end the last E will be extend that means my inter interpretation of extend would be like to get students to perform a task like you give them a project you know a small or it could be something very tiny solve another uh, <laughs> difficult question or something more authentic uh, maybe come up with uh, uh, analysis of something for example uh, Recently, we had uh, the Ferrari car, right, that hit the, the taxi in 2012, May, uh, around 4 p.m., uh, 4 a.m. So we can get students to analyze videos like that and then understand concepts like average speed, instantaneous speed. And then more recently in Hua Chong, there was this teacher who just emailed me two days back. Uh, his name is Ekken. I, I don't presume, I, I don't suppose you all know him because I also do not know him. He just emailed me suddenly and said that he found my work in journal papers and he, he wants to get his Wachong student to model the, you know, in February there was an asteroid that hit uh, Russia. A tiny bit of uh, asteroid that streaked through the skies of uh, Russian air and then uh, through the community, a lot of people took cameras and pictures of it, uh, videos of it. 
So they were able to analyze the data and then uh, hypothesize the trajectory that this asteroid came from. So this Huachong physics teacher emailed me asking me whether I can make a computer model to uh, predict where it came from and all that. Lah. Because I think it's part of his, you know Huachong, you know, if, if Huachong student can't do it, then <laughs> there isn't many people who, who can. Lah. So these students are perhaps uh, at the level where they want to model the physics equation inside it and understand uh, and apply to real world context. Lah. So I'm, I'm working on some sim, lah, but I, I will let you know if I can flesh it out. You can follow my blog, lah, do you know? Uh, okay, how to follow my blog? You just come here. You all know what follow means, right? Uh, follow, that means if you have an RSS feed. Follow, uh, this one. Uh. So it's an RSS feed. Uh. So if you have an RSS feed, uh, you can, once you tag it to your account, you can look through what people are posting. So this is one of those 21st century kind of way to keep in touch. So I also have RSS feed to Mr. Brown because Mr. Brown is quite funny sometimes. So, uh, you know, you can look at him. Okay. Okay, so now it's okay. Okay, so this is the outline. The objective is to make you aware of the features. But like I said, I'm going to customize it to the O-level syllabus. Okay. Then uh, design worksheet, uh, like what I understand from uh, Wen Yao, okay? uh, that could be an area that we can spend some time to dwell on. Okay? So, okay. so uh, is any of you interested to download the authoring toolkit? Are you interested to know how to change the SIM? Yes, are you interested to, un, to, un, to look at the, the underlying codes that the simulation was built on? Yeah, but it's very simple language. Lah. Like, you know, I, I mean, if it gets too difficult, I will know. Yeah. Uh, okay, but... I mean, I, I do program, but I don't program. Uh, so oh. I, I don't mind taking a look at it. Okay, so we can spend some time on it, okay? Now, the good thing is this. I, I, made, I made all this actually to enable anyone to look at it. Uh, but since we are here in Edulab at AST and my colleague Jack and Mr. Neo, they have already installed uh, EGS inside. So what you need to do is this. Okay, um, I'll just cut, cut to the chase. Uh, all these are all resources that you can look at once you are comfortable with the curriculum that we are developing and you want to find out more. You know, you, you have a taste of what can be done and then you're interested to find out more, you can just Google or you can go to these links. Okay. So, uh, I, I run an Edulab program. Uh, it's a proper MA pro, uh, project. So, you can look at this if you're interested. Then, uh, well, I got some other projects lah, so with MOE. So, if you're interested, you can look at this. Okay. So, we have already downloaded EJS. So, what you need to do is this. Okay. So, I wanted to share in depthly on the designs. Okay. So, Maybe we just look through, okay, it, does this seem appeal to you? Does it have an O-level slant that you can use it? Collision cards? Not really. Not really, yeah? Okay, good. So we will skip this, okay? So to get hold of my curriculum, uh, the simulations, I use Dropbox. So you look at this link, okay? It's a, it's, a, it's a Java link, so you just click on it. Okay, then you will download. Uh, no password, no login, okay? Anybody can use it. So you say keep it. Okay, and then you'll download it. Okay, I will not go into the design of it, but I'm just showing you the, the power of today's internet. Uh, we can actually, because these are all open source. Do you deal, do you deal with open source stuff? Yeah, so open source is a very, uh, it's a very 21st century kind of thinking where uh, fundamental belief is everything should be, we should, all of us should have the freedom to change the software to suit our own purposes. So, uh, so this is why I'm able to do the wonderful things that I've done, okay? Because I use professors' work who release them under open source. So uh, I just need to attribute them. Attribute meaning uh, give acknowledgement that these are from uh, Professor XYZ. Uh, so then I can change the, the simulation. So see, the, the simulation just download and then you can launch it. So now it's, it's in, your, in your desktop. So you can click play, okay? You can change the velocity. 
Oh, I, I activated something, is it? Okay, let me see how do I get out of here. Okay, change the velocity. Then you can simulate the physics. Okay, we have actually gone through a few years uh, to improve this. So we can, uh, we, we also have table to show the energies. So, but like you said, like, this is not in the syllabus. So I just uh, show you what roughly can do. Like, okay, roughly. Okay, so any, any uh, wish list, anything you want to try. If not, then we skip. Because it may not be relevant and then we only have about two and a half hours or two. If you want to get, up, we get away from five. Okay, so we skip. Huh? Okay. So, uh, do introduce your colleagues who are interested. These are all uh, free worksheets. So, you click on this. It launches a zip. Same technology. We're using Dropbox. Everything is free. Just use it. Uh, only condition is attribution. So, if it is from AJ, yeah, attribute AJ. You know, if it is from where, just attribute. Most of us have no a uh, little or no difficulty attributing. Okay. Do you have uh, this is in the syllabus? Dropping a solenoid, making a solenoid go through. Uh, this is in the syllabus. Uh, okay. So interesting, right? So um, so you like the screenshot? Okay. Download it. Okay. So you send the request to Dropbox. Okay, just say you want to keep it. Okay, everything is live. Lah. So uh, what I do now, you can do it at home immediately. Okay? So the same, you just click. You just launch it. Okay. So to maximize it to full screen, just double click on the top. Okay, double click on the top. So this is a, a magnet, okay? Usual uh, symbol. This is a, a ring, okay? Do you all teach ring and, and magnet? Or do you teach ring and solenoid? Magnet and solenoid. Magnet and solenoid with a, with a length. Yes. Uh, do you do it horizontally or vertically? Can be both. Can be both, huh? Okay. The wonderful thing about open source is uh, we can change it to customize to almost anything. So, for example, this is a coil moving towards a stationary magnet. Okay? And to toggle the view, because I've been playing with this for a while, so I know what it can do and what it cannot do. And you can just zoom in. Uh, I can just zoom in. Okay? Now you click play. So the coil will now move towards the magnet. And it's all in 3D. Then you can see the how the electron move. These are all equation driven. These are not animation. These are actually computer models. So it, it is actually governed, the motion and the interaction is actually governed by some physics equation that the professor come up with. I'm just a physics teacher who happened to know a little bit of programming and then I, I just changed the code and then I, because it's open source, so I release it back into the internet for free for anyone to use. So essentially, this could be already be in use in uh, many parts of the world, uh, like your fats, uh, you know, fat sims. Okay, fat is a, is a favorite of mine as well. Okay. So, uh, okay, so visually, okay. So uh, what else would you would like? Okay, so maybe I, I, I did this so I would know what you need probably. So you need uh, perhaps the electric field. I'm sorry, the induced EMF, right? So we can redo this again. Oh, I, I didn't make it remember the state. Nah. So you need to click and unclick again. Nah. Okay. So is, is this uh, particular scenario interesting? Anything you want to try? Any particular option that's interesting. So uh, I'm not sure whether, I'm not sure how this will work out, but in any of these open source physics com, uh, simulation, you can always do a right click and then you can change the GUI, increase the font. Okay, so if your student complain, I cannot see, I'm at the back of the classroom. Okay, no problem. So the second one, huh? okay, good. Thank you for your uh, inputs. Huh? So, 
Oh, when it becomes too big, okay, I see, okay. I, I, I can't make it too big because there are too many things. Uh, so I, I need the, the smaller one. Okay, so when I click play, okay, let's see what happens. So now it's a magnet move inside the, the coil. But in this case, it's a ring. Okay, so you can see the induced EMF. Okay, and then I design it such that when it hits the boundary, it will go back. Okay. Uh, for reasons that there were actually some multiple choice questions that, that test the student on a conceptual understanding on what would be the shape of the EMF if the magnet were to go backwards. So that's why I designed it that way. Lah. Then it will stop at the end. Okay. Now if you, for example, have certain burning uh, difficulties, you have some problems teaching this topic, uh, like for example, you know, I do not know what, lah, but you have some ideas that this sim currently can't do, and then it will be very cool if you can add it. Just let me know, and because it's open source, you can change it yourself. Okay. So, uh, any other things you want to, to, to check out? So, okay, normally what we do is uh, we, we also design it such that it can be a long solenoid because this is where things start to become very uh, interesting because we teach students uh, inside the solenoid zero EMF induced, but the student cannot understand. So, we made it such that now, so now you can actually do this, you can do a reset, okay? Or you can do something very cool because uh, through our interaction with our students, uh, you can do a you can do a go back, uh, okay? Now, um, okay, because I changed the variable already, right? So I want to keep all else the same, right? All the other variables. Now I, I click play. Okay, you should be able to observe something different in the in the shape. Okay, while it's inside, okay, it's zero, and it remembers the previous state. So it's something like your data logger features. Different runs, allowing students to look at the, the graphs. So it's, it's all very computational. It's not a static picture that cannot be changed. Once a student decides to investigate on any variables, they can change it, and then they can understand the physics. Okay. So uh, we, we, we did a couple for horizontal. Uh. Okay. Then, uh, okay, let's go back to user defined. Okay, we reset the simulation, so you re forget everything. So now the magnet is here. Okay, the magnet is here. Okay, so uh, we can change the position of Z. Okay, maybe uh, right at the top. Uh, right at the top. Okay, so I can reposition it so I can understand. You can turn it around. Okay, all these green little things are the electrons. Okay, so you can actually activate the B field. Oh, it's not working. Uh. Huh, strange, yeah. Did I do something? I don't know. That there's an ink here, and then I can't. Uh, Acting up. Uh. What should I do? Close the okay. Just close it and then relaunch and see what happens. So when you use technology, you have to be prepared. Huh? <laughs> no, things like this always happen. Touch the keyboard. Touch the keyboard huh? Yeah, yeah, I was uh, playing with it uh, interactively on the, on the whiteboard. Oh, okay, because it's considered ink. Okay. Close it and relaunch uh, if it's a uh, giving problem. Uh, the, the good news is uh, it uses Java, so it's, it runs on Mac. If you have a Mac, it runs on Windows 
of all the three versions that you, I mean, all the Windows version that you have, and uh, Unix, which I think, unless you're into open source, you, you wouldn't go Linux play way. Uh, but it runs on all three platforms. Uh, Android is coming, but it could take years. Lah. It could take a few years for it to appear. That means we can actually compile simulation that runs on Android. Uh, iPhone is definitely out because it's uh, proprietary. Okay. And Android is runs on Java actually. So the professors are currently working hard to allow certain elements in EJS to run on the Android. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. I think it's in the download. Download. Okay, so uh, we are back again. Okay, so I activated the screen. Okay, I activated the the trip. So this is uh, how it will look like if we were to drop. So now it's uh, drop under gravity. Okay, so again, it hits the bottom, it will stop. So you will notice for physics uh, fanatics that this peak is actually higher than the other peak. These are all computationally, computationally calculated. So unless something went wrong in the model, then uh, we have to figure it out. Lah. Okay, but based on the model, this is what I can do. Okay, now we can do, a, uh, we can change the height, we can change the magnetic field, okay? Change the magnetic field. Increase it now to five, double the amount, okay? Because the students in River Valley enjoyed this, okay, so they increase the the magnetic field, so they can actually do a predict observe, okay, then they can see the graph visually that this uh, numerically should be double of that, okay, uh, but if let's say they don't believe, okay, so we get students to do the activity, because it's not, because they when they hear, you no, know, they cannot remember, uh, when they see, they cannot understand. Uh, but if you engage them in activities, then there's a higher chance they will understand. Okay, so this is what we did. Lah. We get them to engage them by getting them to do uh, analysis. So we ask them to analyze the voltage. So they can click on this value here. Look at the table value. Uh, let me see where is it. Lah. Uh, there, see the table value, All right? So it happened at precisely the time 0 0.78, okay, and the amplitude of the voltage for this particular graph is 0 0.978, and the other curve, okay, the other curve is uh, this number, okay. So you ask them you know, to take take the two values, ask them. Then if they don't believe that they are on the right track, uh, if they don't believe that this is two times of this, ask them to run different values. Then they can discuss and compare. Okay, so that way we find that a student, by collecting the data and then understanding, doing some activity, then because of the data, they got no choice but to come up with some ideas about the relationship. We, we find that things like this generally uh, stick longer with the student. Then if you were to give them some formula, ask them to apply, you know, it's very uh, yesteryear, uh, teaching method. Lah. <laughs> so we, we designed these tools uh, with, the, with the intention to allow inquiry. Okay? But uh, then again, it also depends on the skillful teacher that is facilitating. So the amount of learning gains that you can get is also dependent on your, on your teaching skills. Okay? But like, like I said, uh, we have all these worksheets. Okay? All these worksheets are all here. Okay, just click on it and then see whether... Okay, let's look at the latest one. Now, this is from Serangoon JC. So you notice Serangoon JC implemented this simulation twice. Once in 2012 and once in 2013. Okay, so they must have liked it. Lah. And you have to look at the number of teachers that are involved in this. Lah. So they usually implement level-wide. That means as a department, you have to... Uh, decide whether this is something worth doing for the entire cohort and then you try your very best to make sure that the learning is uh, useful okay I think something is not wrong uh, something is wrong it's not downloading so uh, maybe I go back uh. ok 
Okay, so let's try another one. Uh. I, I do not know why it didn't allow me to download. Uh, but okay, it's supposed to work, uh, but if it doesn't, uh, drop me a mail. Okay, I start another instance. Ah. So you, you see that okay, the sim could be useful. Okay, then these are all the all the worksheets ah, that are inside. Okay, you can click on it and, and use. Uh, okay, so maybe I just quickly scroll through the list ah, and then you see. Ah. So this is a solar system. Any use? No use. Ah. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to customize this to the the physics teacher in Hua Chong who wanted the asteroid. Okay? Because by changing all this variables are uh, eccentricity and, and all that uh, you can actually create a new asteroid and then check whether you will hit earth uh, at the predicted time okay uh, do you need to know g mm over r square that kind of thing no need uh? okay this is a uh, earth and a moon so we we design it so that they'll put real numbers inside then they can see g field and uh, and the uh, potential graph and you can look at the forces acting on it. This is particularly useful for escape velocity. Do you still remember escape velocity? Okay, uh, never mind. I mean, <laughs> I was just asking for. Uh, we can skip all this. So, uh, how about this one? Equatorial. Do you need to know geostationary? No, ah. Uh? Okay. Uh, ripple tank. Superposition. But the, something like this, something like two waves travel, then uh, one wave travel to the right, one wave travel to the left, then what is the resultant? Need to know? Okay. Uh, projectile motion, I think this is out also, right? Uh, two charge system, draw the E few lines. No need? This one, uh? okay, we try, we take a look. Uh? Okay. Uh, the original model is created by this professor called uh, Fukun Huang. Okay, uh, you you should have heard of him, lah. Anyway, we invited him to come uh, to Singapore to conduct a public lecture for us, and he also conducted a workshop for us. So, you can go to my blog and you can look at the pictures that we that we have of him, lah. Okay. Okay. So uh, it says it's created by him, okay? So I say it's slightly edited by me, okay? Followed by my, my blog, okay? So you notice that first time you open it up, it's blank, okay? Uh, it's because I designed it such that the, the charges are zero. So when this charge is positive and this charge, so when, you, when this is uh, positive, and then you can select, you leave the mouse long there, uh, long enough there, uh, it will show up what you want to do. Lah. Okay, so this is the E few lines. Okay. So you can actually say uh, I want lesser few lines. How would it look like? Okay. You can actually now change the position and then ask it, oh but yeah, it's acting up. Uh. Ah okay. So you can draw at different position. Okay, now you can have also a two charge system. Okay, two charge system. Okay, my colleagues in AJC were very particular about the way it's drawn. So I'm quite sure that it has gone through a certain level of uh, scrutiny to make sure that it can correctly represent what is taught in the school. So they, they told me that, okay, here must be blank, you know, and then, uh, uh, and then the, the distance here represents the strength, right? the closer, the, the stronger. So this is represented in that, in that fashion. Uh, and I want to test out. Maybe I make this double, then what will happen? Okay. So typically you get students to draw this, okay? But what happens if this is here? How would the, the shape look like? Oh, this one not, not so good, huh? Wait, let me. Uh, 
I thought I fixed it, but it appears that it is not. Okay, so maybe something like this. So when the teachers in AJ uh, wanted this, wanted this, but because of the emails back and forth, uh, uh, I didn't quite know what they wanted. But only after I went to attend the teacher's lesson, then I sit down, then, I, then he talked to me, oh yeah, it cannot be like that. Lah. Because previously it was just uh, just two, just lines, lah, but cannot not like that. Lah. Not, not more dense. Because he wanted this representation to fully capture the essence that they were trying to convey in the concept. Okay? So I had to change it. Uh, but so when I, after I changed it, I gave it back to the school and I, and I put it out on the internet, but uh, nobody has, sent, has since used it. Lah. And then they also criticize uh, the previous model. So now it is drawn according to the correct picture that they wanted. Lah. Okay. So you can see that now we only draw a few of the, the few lines. And it, it is represented the way that they wanted. Okay. As closely as it represents. Okay. Now there are many other features that you can do. Uh, but because it's not even taught in the A-level, so I, I, I didn't pursue it. But they are wonderful features here uh, okay you can look at all these uh, few lines okay what does this do uh? okay you can draw make it bigger okay you can don't don't have the few lines just a few vectors okay then you can uh, let me see what does this do Okay, this is a potential uh, field. So you can actually draw it in different ways. And then you can even represent it in 3D. So if you zoom, using your shift button, uh, you can zoom and you can look at the, uh, the, the 3D aspect of it. Uh, of the potential. That we, normally when I teach physics, I, I say this is a, a hill. This is a well. So uh, potential hill and potential well. Uh, cause we try to have an analogy of the mechanical system so that they can understand the meaning of this potential concept in, in the context of uh, charge. Okay. So then we also have, uh, this is obviously not designed by me, this is actually already inside the, the sim, uh, but the professor Huang already made it such that you can actually now activate uh, a point mass. Oh, sorry, I, I removed this one. Huh? Because it's interfering with the. Okay, it's interfering, so I uncheck it. Lah. Okay. So you can put a charge here, and then you can get students to predict what will be the path. So, what should be the path like? Uh, it, it, if this is a negative charge, this is a positive, it should be able to go something like that. Because you'll be trapped inside this potential. Lah. Let's try. Lah. Let's see whether I'm correct or not. Okay, so it moves uh, because it's trapped in the potential. This test charge is a uh, it's a positive charge. So it's attracted to the negative. It is repelled by the negative. So the introduction of the potential well, <coughs> like those things in science center, you know, then would help the student to understand uh, this a little bit better. But uh, when I showed this to the a level student, wow, they were very excited. They were like, wow, 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 no? Yeah, but we didn't use it. Lah. <laughs> okay. So, is this interesting? So, you can look at it and then you can design activities. Lah. So, okay. Uh, okay. So, I think this is perhaps a little bit too high level. Maybe I talk about something that is, is more relevant, uh, more related, I mean. So, if I put a, a chart here, okay. You can ask the student to show, uh, to predict what is the individual, what is the component of the E field. Okay, then how about this one? Okay, what's the component of E field? This was especially uh, requested by the teachers in AJ because they had a teaching problem. Not very sophisticated, but with technology, uh, we can actually customize it to fit what they want. So they wanted to represent this length and this length. So drawing a straight line connecting here, this will be the amount of length, this will be the amount of length, and they will draw the resultant okay, as a parallelogram. 
so uh, this was this was uh, what they wanted lah. So now I can actually release a sim, and then you can you can perform wonderful simulation. <laughs> okay, and everything will be calculated. So it's uh, yeah, it, it's very fascinating to look at it lah. So we need to this. We need to design activities that will then allow students to conduct inquiry, okay, uh, while aligning to what you want them to learn, okay. I, I close this. Anything you want to check out? Okay. Okay. So this is the the end of the out of the set of the nine simulations. Only two are relevant to the O level, okay. So I try to customize uh, to to the O level. So. Okay, uh, we, we try to do an activity with 5E, okay, because I think uh, it could be interesting. Okay, uh, but let me. Okay, then, then we're supposed to go for a break and, and all that. Huh? Okay, so. Okay. So I was saying. Uh, okay, so it's here. Huh? So download. Okay, so I didn't link to the exact uh, URL. I, I linked to the zip. Okay, unclick, unzip it. So that explains why it takes a bit longer. Okay, so this is a uh, worksheet. Now let's look at the answer, lah. We are all teachers, right? No need to look at the student one. <laughs> uh, but the, this is what typically is uh, offered, lah. Uh, you, you just attribute the school. Uh, just use it. By the way, this is all inside ICD connection. Can I do a bit of hard selling? Have you heard of ICD connection? Yeah. ICD connection is a. Uh, uh, later I show you the website. Okay, so uh, this is a worksheet. Okay, designed by Sarangun JC. So okay, let's let's look. Let's use the lens of Phi E to look at this lah, Okay, so is that engaged? Is that engaged? No, no. I mean, I mean the workshop activity is there an engagement phase? You know, where we like, oh yeah, wow. You know, we we sh maybe show a YouTube about something interesting. Then we try to relate to the activity they're gonna do. You know, or maybe we show a show a newspaper article. We we put it here. You know, we talk about something. Do you know about this thing that when the car stops at the traffic light, we actually use uh, electromagnetic induction principles to detect the presence of the car. Because as the car moves to the traffic light, are you aware of this? You want me to explain? So when the car, okay, you look, you, you all drive. Okay, you, you, you look carefully, yeah. You go to, even if you're a pedestrian, you just look carefully. The places where the car stops, uh, the first car, uh, not, the, not the subsequent one, the first car, you notice there are all these funny uh, bl uh, black lines, uh, like rubber, like that. Uh. Okay, those are actually uh, induction coils, if I'm not wrong. Okay, so what it does is it generates an EMF, e, uh, uh, magnetic field. When the car comes in, because car body is metal, okay, it's a conductor, right? So when the magnetic field that is going across the road, uh, there's no metal uh, car, there will be a certain reading for the EMF, or a certain reading in some, this, some output. Uh. So when the car comes in, uh, the current uh, detected uh, is actually higher. So that's how you can actually use this as an information to sense the presence of car and then program in your logic in your traffic light to be more customized to the traffic condition. So when more cars come, then you'll start a timer and calculate the time, you know, stuff like that. So you tell students like, oh, this one, wow, hey, yeah, important to learn, <laughs> you know, this concept. So this is what I thought the school was lacking. I tell the school, but it's up to the school's prerogative to insert such ideas inside. Okay, so engage, uh, I would say currently quite low. Okay, so maybe you can think about ways to improve the engagement. Okay, now explore. Now because we use a sim, so our explore cannot be too low, right? It's, it's inherently this is an inquiry activity. The students need to do some investigation, so our explore will be quite high. So any activity, so, uh, so in terms of the framework of five, for, for, for 5E, Explore is definitely there. But how you design the Explore is also important. That means how, how much 
information do you tell the student in order for them to carry out the investigation so that they don't feel frustrated? Because I notice, you know, all teachers, we are all busy people. And once you, you know, VP or school initiative or e-learning week, whatever, no? so or just roll out, you know, busy, ma. <laughs> just roll out. A students will, will feedback. Uh, I, I know, la, they, will, they will say things like, they were completely lost. With the worksheet, la, they see stars. They don't know, know what's happening. Even if it's so clear, la, most students can get it. But you always get a small minority that will criticize and say, I don't understand. I, I want to be spoon-fed. So, so, uh, so you need to make sure that your <coughs> activities are very start simple. Get them to figure out things. Okay? So start simple. You tell them simple things like click this. You know, Tell me exactly where. In fact, this is also not ideal yet because you are struggling with saving space, printing space versus being very clear. So I told my teachers, uh, let me see. Uh. So we are talking about explore. Uh, okay? So any criticism, any comments about this way of exploring? The worksheet, okay? Doesn't look too bad, lah. Okay. So, uh, I actually did some research with students, and then I collected some surveys. Some students said that a video, you know, all of us are in the age of. I think I need to stop this for a while. 